Uh, hello. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome. Uh, we are going to do our next, our last chapter. Um, we are going to complete it today. And then we will stop. We'll finish uh, within maybe one hour, I think, at most. <clears throat> and then we will uh, 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 wait for next week. We do our test our first assessment test. Um, and then we will start our last chapter. Okay, not really our last chapter, but they are, the, last, the last two chapters are really short. I don't uh, teach them in their entirety. Uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, but yes, we, we are going to finish today early. We are not going to take the whole lecture. Now I've asked my assistant to set for me a number of questions that we can put on Muele for you. Uh, these would be like quizzes. Uh, obviously, uh, because we, um, you know, yeah, some people might uh, uh, might cheat. Uh, we try to limit the time uh, that you have available. Uh, so if I give you 30 minutes and you cannot finish in 30 minutes, and then that is a problem. But I try to give you a fair amount of time. Uh, and also I might put that quiz, I might make it available for a short time duration, like three hours, so that every one of you is able to do it within that time. Uh, the problem is that when you give it a long time, uh, it gives people uh, all sorts of ideas. Um, and what we are trying to do is to make sure that uh, you don't think that there is uh, an easier way. You know, you get your work done uh, on your own. All right, so we've been discussing uh, memory. We, we've talked about uh, a number of uh, different types of memory. We've been looking at RAM and uh, random access memory, and we say that. Uh, in this context, yes, it's random access memory and that might apply to all sorts of <coughs> different memories. But in the context of this book, RAM means the volatile uh, or temporary memory uh, that we use usually in computers. 
uh, to store temporary things or temporary tasks. And if we were to lose the power, then we would lose that memory. I think, uh, sorry, we would lose that data. I think we talked a bit about uh, us being able to back up uh, data because in, uh, in, 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 uh, in RAM, uh, you find that it's, uh, you find that you're using very low power, and when you have low power, uh, particularly in dynamic RAM, uh, you can use uh, you can use some batteries uh, to store for you some data, and that's how you might be able to try. at least when the power goes off, that data might be transferred to some uh, non-volatile memory like flash uh, or even an auxiliary memory so that you do not lose that data. But generally random access memory uh, or RAM in this context would mean that if power goes off, your data is gone. Uh, we've looked at a number of things. We've looked at address multiplexing in the case of uh, dynamic RAM. Dynamic RAM is where you know you, you store your data on capacitors <clears throat> and there's these capacitors lose uh, and so really the, the, the capacitor has charge, is charged to five volts if it stores one uh, volt and it is, uh, um, okay, it has a charge, a capacitance of a few picofarads. And if it has no charge, then it stores zero. The problem is that even those that store one, which are charged, they lose their charge over time. And this time is short. It is four milliseconds or at most 16 milliseconds. Uh, now we say that you have got to perform refreshing. And so you have to refresh uh, these uh, memories uh, or memory cells that are made of capacitors. And that's how you refresh the data. So if it's data one, if it is bit one, uh, you refresh the charge so that it remains charged. Now, the problem is that the, sh the time is short, uh, four milliseconds. So if you have to perform a refresh every four milliseconds in every cell and you have a big cell, that can be a problem uh, indeed. So let us look at, um, uh, let us look at some, uh, some examples. Um, Okay, so uh, last time I told you that we would look at some schemes of refreshing. Now, in general, we say that when you refresh a cell, we I think we even saw the circuit that is used to refresh the cell. So if you read from a cell, you also at the same time uh, refresh it. I believe it is uh, somewhere, uh, it is somewhere here, I'll copy this. Okay. Okay, so let me copy this and put it here and we can have uh, a look. Yeah, so we say that when you read, uh, you basically close uh, switches SW2, SW3, and SW4, obviously you open SW1 so that any data that is coming in from this side does not uh, access the, the capacitor. But if this is closed uh, and that is closed and this is closed, then you have some feedback loop. So anyway, whatever charge is on this capacitor will go through the SW3 switch and gets compared to some V reference. This could be two volts. So if the charge, if that voltage is above two volts, you have bit one. If it's below vol uh, two volts, you have bit zero. And so the sense amplifier, if it senses a value that is greater than the V reference, it will generate a fresh five volts. If it is below, it will generate a fresh zero volts. Uh, obviously, we say that the capacitor will lose its charge. So it may have been at five volts, but maybe now it has reduced three volts or so 2.5 volts. And now you, you generate a fresh five volts, which goes through SW4, SW2, and recharges that to the maximum. Uh, and if you, if you had a zero volt, the zero, even if it had discharged or picked up whatever it has, uh, it would go back also and discharge it back to zero volt. So that is the process of refreshing and it happens within the read operation. Uh, every time you read from a memory cell, you also refresh it. 
that is how uh, somebody might wonder how does a zero remain a zero and a one remain a one. This is how you do it. It's just that you generate a fresh value either at five volts or zero volts, and that actually then goes and either charges or discharges the the char the the the, the, the capacitor uh, respectively. Right <clears throat> now. The problem is that if you, for instance, have a 1M uh, by, I don't know, eight memory, in fact, I'll say 1M by one memory, that means you have two to power 20, which is 1 million, basically. 1 million uh, plus. Now, if you have, for instance, to refresh every four milliseconds, it means that you must read from each cell every four milliseconds over 1 million, we know that 2 to power 20 is greater than 1 million, okay, whatever it is. And this actually gives you 4 nanoseconds. And if this value, we know it is bigger, that would be slightly smaller than 4 nanoseconds. So it means you have to read from every cell at least at a rate of 4 nanoseconds per cell. And that is even before you perform any other operations because you see the memory is there to keep data. So you may be reading. You don't have to read through every cell if the data you want is not there. But for, for, for us to refresh, you must read from every cell at a rate of four nanoseconds per cell for you to perform that refresh. Now, if, now this is really uh, impossible. It is too fast and it would never leave you any time to perform anything. <clears throat> Luckily, or fortunately, these manufacturers are now manufacturing uh, cells, uh, so DRAMs that follow this principle, that every time you perform a read operation at any cell, all the cells within that row will be refreshed. So, you know, we have our memory like that. Okay, those are columns and rows and so on. So, if, for instance, I perform a read operation at this address, all of these will also be refreshed. In other words, I now no longer need to read in every address, I need to read in every row. And that is a big deal. If I'm reading in every row, I read here, I read there, I read there, I read there, I read there. It's not the same as reading everywhere else. So for instance, let us look at this. We know that our one M by one, is equal to 2 to power 20. Uh, and so how many rows are these? It is really 2 to power 10 times 2 to power 10. So this memory, if it was a square array, it would be 1024 by 1024. Now, I just need to read through 100, uh, 1024 rows. Uh, and so my time would now reduce to 4 milliseconds over 1024, which is about 4, uh, microseconds <clears throat> instead of four nanoseconds. Now, four microseconds is very small because if I have to refresh every four milliseconds, but my my refreshing now takes four uh, microseconds, I can do it. I'm able now to do it uh, much faster. Okay, not much faster. I'm able to save time to perform uh, uh, the other uh, operations. I can refresh and still perform the other operations. Now the question is, okay, so maybe uh, my, 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 this, this explanation I've just given sort of answers it, uh, but let's say I have 1,024 rows, but maybe my data that I'm accessing is at these rows. I really never need to access data on, that, on those rows and that's okay. So it appears that we need some type of refresh control logic to make sure that everything gets refreshed even though we don't intend to read from it during our normal operation of the cell. Otherwise, this is how you then ensure that every row gets uh, refreshed uh, if you don't want to lose the data. And so we have two types of refresh control logic. One is the bust refresh, and the other one is the distributed refresh. Now in the burst refresh, every four nanoseconds, sorry, every four milliseconds or 16 milliseconds, depending on uh, the memory, every four milliseconds, we are going to stop every operation on that memory and then read through every row until the very end, in this case, 1024. 
and then go back to our normal operations. After another four milliseconds, we go back and refresh again by reading, you know, deliberately reading from every, uh, uh, every row. This is important because <clears throat> then you ensure that even though in the normal operation you didn't read from some row, that still it will be refreshed. Um, that is bust refresh. Put down everything and perform that refresh process. Uh, there is the distributed refresh where you intersperse them, okay, the normal operation. So you do some things, then maybe after two milliseconds you can go and uh, uh, refresh some some rows like a thousand like uh, five hundred, and then you perform some other things and you perform and, and then you refresh the other ones and so on and so forth. So here you sort of uh, there is a bit of flexibility. I don't know which one really is better, but there is a bit of flexibility to say that okay, I'm not going to completely halt my my performance or my 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 uh, activity or normal operation just to do a refresh of a long space. You know, this could be one meg one gigabit. So it can take quite a long time. Uh, but, uh, but both of these would perform the same uh, objective anyway. One is called bus refresh. Another one is called distributed refresh. So how do we actually achieve this? We have already talked about address multiplexing. I think you remember that. Um, and so what we can do is we apply our address to the inputs and we saw how we do address multiplexing. The lower uh, part of the address will, um, will go into the column register, uh, the column address register, and it will decode or it will uh, resolve the column. And the upper part or the most significant half of the address will resolve the rows. Uh, we saw the strobe, uh, we saw the strobe uh, control signals, the uh, RAS and the, co the CAS, the column address uh, strobe and the row address strobe. <clears throat> In this case, since we need only read from the row, we really don't need the column uh, address. So we can keep our CAS in its inactive state, which is high, and we keep read write command in high so that it can uh, read. And then we just sequentially put RAS low so that we can strobe different addresses. So if I have my rows here, uh, maybe 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, I will put in the address of the first row. Obviously, we continue and, and so on. So maybe my first row's address is 0, 0, 0, 0. I will put RAS down, you know, make it go low because it is so that it is activated and it can identify uh, the row that is a similar to, to reading from the row. And then I will put it back up and change the address now to the next row, which is 0001. For the cast, it's already low. So whatever address is there for the columns will never be uh, put into the, into the memory anyway, because it's not, it's not changing for cast. And then I will strobe that, read on the, on the first row, then change that to 0010, read the second row, put back RAS in its inactive state, change the address to 0011, and then put RAS down so that I read row three and so on until I've read everything. And then I can go back to my uh, normal operation. During normal operation, RAS is high. After that, when I want to start my bust uh, refresh again, I will go back to that point and repeat that process and so on and so on. And you can see this is what they are doing here. Um, you can see that read, write and curse are both high. This one deactivates the column address strobe. So you don't have uh, any column addresses going in. And then this one, we'll make sure that we can read. That is the read operation is the one that refreshes uh, the memory. Um, and then we find, and this one actually is an address of the first, you know, the first row and the first column. This one is the first, <coughs> excuse me, is the first column, second row. That one is first column, third row, and so on. So you can read that, or you could read any other, you know, uh, any other column 
but in my point is that we don't really need to change the columns as long as we we read from a row the column within which that cell is does not matter everything will get uh, refreshed right so <clears throat> Uh, I want us to go to something else. Last week we talked about, last week or maybe this week. Yeah, we talked about how you can expand memory. Sometimes you have, actually uh, I should probably um, uh, remove this. Sometimes you have a small memory and you want to create a larger memory. Maybe you have a number of diff small chips within your lab and you want to create a larger chip, okay? Uh, how do you do it? We can combine this the same way we've combined decoders, the same way we've combined counters, uh, the same way we have combined uh, registers, all manner of things, of devices. Now let us look at an example straight away. So in other words, we can expand the word size and the capacitor. And we need to remember that word size is really the, you know, that's the last value. So if I have 16 by four, this is my word size or word length. And these are the number of words. And th the number of words are really the ones that determine uh, the capacity because the, the word size usually does not change for a particular chip. Uh, now, so if I say I'm expanding word size, I'm focusing on this number. If I'm expanding capacity, I'm focusing on that number. So we are going to see uh, how this can be done, right? So we have an example here. We have, we need one six by eight, 16 by eight, but we have a number of 16 uh, by four chips. Now, how do we create a 16 by eight when we have a number of 16 by four chips? You can see here that what increases here is the word size. So we need more word, sorry, we need a longer word, but the number of words can be the same. And, and the number of words here will be 16, but we just need a longer word. So here we can use uh, two 16 by four uh, chips to create this. And I'm going to show you how you do that. So first of all, we draw two chips, okay? We, we can have our two chips side by side. We know that each one is 16 by four. Now, each of these has four, four outputs, obviously. Uh, three and four, one, two, three, and four. These are my outputs. And I can say, I could use IO, okay, input, output. So I'll say input, output, one, two, um, maybe three, no, zero, one, two, three. And these are also input outputs. <coughs> which will be zero, one, two, three. I actually don't know why I'm doing it uh, like that. Uh, just give me one moment. Uh, the, the nomenclature is important. Okay, so yeah, so I think uh, because the most significant bit is usually on our, oh dear, is usually on our left, I think we should uh, keep it to our left. So this is input output, let me remove that as well. So our, my input outputs will be here. It will be three, two, one, zero, all right? And also that, okay. Now, what is the number of addresses? The number of addresses, because the word size is 16, that is two to power four. So we have four addresses. Uh, and we can put our four addresses up here. All right, I'm going to... Uh, remove that. 
and my have a3, a2, a1, a0. And they are going in here. So that's a3 and a2, a1, a0. So a3, a2, a1, a0. Then a3 would come there also. A2, A1, and A0. Now, what does this really mean? It means that if I select, if I have, let me say that I have like A3, A2, A1, A0. It's some memory, you know, let's say 1001. That means that if I select an address 1001, if I select it in, in, in this chip, it will be the same one that I have selected in that chip. And I'm going to call it, let me just name this. Let me call this chip RAM zero and that chip RAM one. Now we know that usually each chip has a read write command, okay? And so we can have a read write, okay? The same of one will go into that one, read, write. And that write is active law, read, write. Now, it means here, if we connect the same uh, thing, if we connect the same signal to both chips, it means that if we are reading, we are reading from both chips. If we are writing, we are writing into both chips. Okay, so that, that shouldn't, be, uh, shouldn't bring any confusion. Now, what about chip select? With chip select, if we are reading from both chips and if we are writing into both chips, both of them need to be selected at the same time. Uh, that's chip select. And once again, uh, we should activate both of them at the same time. Now, all of this is very clear because up to this point, you know, this is there is no ambiguity here. Now, Remember that we have increased our word size from four to eight, word size from four to eight. It means that if previously we needed a bus of four bits, now we need an eight bit bus. Okay, so one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one can, so each one of these will put, and this is my bus. I can name it as D7, D6, all the way uh, to D0. So this one can put in that bus, but because it is input output, that bus will only have one line. So we show po two points, uh, either inputting or outputting. If we are reading, we are outputting. If we are writing, we are inputting. That one will be now working with uh, this one. That one will work with that one, and this one will work uh, with that. Now, this one will put its contents on that line, this one on that line, uh, this one on that line, sorry. And finally, that one on the last line. Now, this means that RAM zero, is the MSB, okay, maybe not MSB, but it is the higher, you know, most significant. And RAM one is the least significant. So if I had my words, maybe I've read the information from this one, this one put, the, the word from RAM zero will be, uh, the highest and the word from RAM 1 will be the highest. And how does, how would this work? Uh, let's say that we want to, we want to read. If we want to read, we make read write be high and we make our um, uh, chip select below, first of all. And if that is the case, then you can see that the same read write command would go into both chips and also both of, ch of them will be uh, selected uh, because they are both active law. Now, <coughs> we, we now supply our address. Let us say A3, A2, A1, A0 is 1001. 
okay now it means we will go into the 100 address in rom 0 and in rom 1 in fact if you want to look at this it is obviously 16 by by now 8 so we are going to get whatever is stored at rom 0 and we could say maybe at rom 0 we had at rom 0 address 1001 whatever is stored there let's say 1000 and whatever is stored here might be 0011 and then our 8 bit word becomes 1000011 okay as simple uh, as simple as that <clears throat> So you can see here that, yes, here, uh, basically we maintain address size. The reason why we do this is because the, word, the number of words do not change. It's just that we get a uh, part of the word from here and another part from the other one. But the number of, charge of words will remain 16. But now, of course, if we are increasing the word size, the capacity will also inadvertently increase. So when you look at this expanding word size and capacity, it is almost the same. If you expand the word size, you'll definitely expand the capacity unless you reduce the number of words. And if you increase uh, the number of words, you'll also increase the capacity unless you reduce the word size. So, yeah, uh, either way, you, you're increasing capacity. So that is first what we do uh, when we are increasing word size. Now, two, we connect read write and chip select uh, to a common. Okay, that could confuse you. Right. Uh, connect read write of all chips uh, together. Okay, so same connection, same for chip select. Okay, and obviously, <coughs> you will now use a larger uh, data bus. Okay. Uh, Infinix Smart Five. I don't know your name. Uh, the the wait. What is the significance? What is the relevance of making chip select active low? I mean, so what would be the relevance of making it active high? I mean, it's it's the same. And I think previously we've seen cases where we have uh, on memories we have two chip select inputs and one is active low, one is active high. It really doesn't matter. We just get one active state. Now you'll notice that most of the time these chip select uh, inputs are active low, but there's no particular relevance. I mean, it could be active high and it would work exactly the same way. You just need to give it the right input uh, depending on what you need to do. So yeah, yeah, there's no, you know, it's not that it couldn't be active high. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but you, we've seen usually that they are uh, active low. Okay. So, so now if I had eight by two, okay, chips, and I want eight by eight memory. By the way, when we combine memory different chips, we create what we call a memory module. Okay, so a memory module is a combination of individual chips. <clears throat> uh, please repeat how you made the data bus bigger. I mean, um, I don't know, I don't think I can repeat it necessarily, but we had previously we had 16 by four chips. So if I'm working with a 16 by four chip, my data bus can be four bits. I mean, it could be bigger, but I would only be using uh, four, 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 four bits, so four lines. Now, if I've created a 16 by eight, I need eight lines because each output must have its own line. That's why if you had a four bit bus, now you have to find a bus that is eight bits. And if you had eight bit bus, but you, you are not using the other four, now you have got to use them. So it's just by making it bigger, you know, you instead of drawing four, you know, you draw eight, just 
just as simple as that. This is important because it shows that uh, you understand that each bit must have its own line as it should. So if you have an eight by two chips, you have eight by two chips and you want to create eight by eight, it means that we need an eight by two here, eight by two, eight by two, eight by two. And these are different chips. And at the end of the day, you will end up with eight uh, by eight. Now the address is here. We know that address is choose the word. So two to power eight, two to power three is eight. So we have three bits of the address. We know that we have read write, and we also have chip select. So here you can, uh, it's really easy. We know that we are going to combine uh, four eight by two chips. Okay, so we have one, two, three, and four. We maintain our three addresses, uh, A2, A1, A0, and these ones will go into, okay, so A3, so A2 will go into the A2 port on each of these chips, okay? Uh, and so on and so that has to be uniform a2 a1 a0 and so on i can make this my ram 0 ram 1 ram 2 ram 3 and then from here i know that each individual chip has two outputs right i can call them input output two outputs and so on <coughs> Um, and now because I've created an eight by eight chip, which module, which means I need eight outputs or eight output lines, I will draw my eight uh, bit bus, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and eight. And so this one, which gives me the most significant bit, will come here. Uh, I can say D7, D6, D5 all the way to D0. This one will put its output here. Once again, input output. That one will come there and that one there. Uh, this one will come here. This one there. And finally, that one will come there and that one will come here. So <clears throat> I should have read write, okay, which comes, uh, this is read write, uh, read write, read write, and read write, okay. So I put the same command in all the chips so that if I'm reading, I'm reading from all of them simultaneously. If I'm writing, I'm writing into them all simultaneously. And the address actually gives me the same address location in each of the four chips, meaning that if I'm going to read, I'm going to read from the same address from the four chips, all of the four chips, same address. Then I can have my chip select, okay? My chip select, which is active law, also needs to, you know, to be activated in all of them. Please, when you draw in your exam, try to draw a nicer diagram than, than mine. It's not as easy writing on a, on, a, on a computer screen. Okay, so I know there are some questions. Let's see. Can't, uh, okay. Is there a point where the chips might need to be selected at different times? Yes, Derek, and we are going to see that uh, in a moment. But when we are expanding the word size, we need all of them at the same time uh, because we, you know, we need to read or write into them. We need to read from them at the same time so that our word uh, can be larger. So <clears throat> let's assist. I imagine that my A3, A2, A1 is say. Uh, one, one, one. It means we are looking at the same memory spot 
in all of the cells, okay? Maybe one, one memory cell is there, okay? And whatever information is there will be two bits. So you might find, if we are reading, maybe there was one, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, zero. And then when I'm looking at my address, uh, as at my data bus, this, this information in these locations will be put on the data bus. And when the CPU reads it, it will read, uh, this being the most significant bit, it will read 11011000. One, zero, one, zero, zero. And then from each having two bits per word, now the whole thing is eight bits per word. Any questions? Okay. Um, is there another example of increasing capacity instead? Yes, Frederick. I'm going to. <laughs> Maybe this is very easy for you. You, you are rushing me. Uh, but I am going to show you uh, how we increase the word say, the, the, the capacity instead. What if we want 16 by 8 and we have 8 by 4? It is. Um, you would now have to do. Let's first go through. So now we have seen how we can increase word size. We are going to see how we can increase uh, the number of words, okay? And then you, you will do, you will see, you will go and investigate what if you wanted to do both at the same time. What if you wanted to increase the number of words, like, uh, like uh, the, this question, uh, you want to increase the number of words and also at the same time increase the word size. Uh, that's by Israel. I think it could be done. This book is quite silent about it, but you can uh, look at if it is possible. Maybe I will, uh, I will also try and do it and maybe set an assignment about it. Uh, but, but yes, right. Um, expanding word size. So I'll leave this one here. You can try it later. But you see, we have a static RAM, which is 1K by one, okay, so one bit per, per, per location. Uh, it has one active low chip select input and a separate input output data. But by the way, if these were, if these were, let's say I have my two chips, if these were separate data input and data output, then I would be having like that, Let's say we have four, and then I would be having, okay? Instead of having these, just two of these, I would be having a pair per output. So this would be input, okay, so this wouldn't be input output. It would be maybe in one, out one, in zero, out zero, something like that. And then this one would be putting its uh, input there. And if it was right reading, it would, no, I've made a mistake. Uh, so if it is writing, it uses that. If it is reading, it uses that. And for the other uh, input, it would be, if it is writing, it uses that. If it is reading, it uses that. I think you remember uh, last week when we said that even where we do not use uh, input output, you know, terminals, we still have to connect the input and the output, uh, separate input and output terminals on the same bus. All right, so and you can see that the termination, like for this case is on the same bus, same bus line, same bus line, same bus line. It's just that when we are doing uh, writing, we cannot do reading at the same time because of the uh, this, okay? Show how you can combine several of these to form a 1K by 4 module. If I have 1K by 1 and I want 1K by 4, clearly I need uh, four of these. And we've seen the theory. <clears throat> so for instance, this one wants to create a 1K by 8. 1K by 8 module from 1K by 1. So clearly we need 8. But 1K, the number of words, the word size does not change. It is 2 to power 10. And so we need 10 address bits. 
uh, here we are going to need eight lines. Okay, you can see this is D7 uh, to D0. These are eight data lines. Okay, but if each of these individually was being used, it would only have one data line, or at least it would use only one data line on whatever data bus size you use. Uh, once again, these are separate data input, data output, so you can see that is in, that is out. Each of these will have one word. In, out, in, out, and each of them is connected to a different bus. Now, my, my 10 address lines are A9, to A0, okay? You can see them here. They are, the same address is resolved in each of these chips. So if my, this is uh, whatever, you know, this is the same address that is selected in each chip because it is the same address that is on the line. And then you see that all read write inputs and chip select inputs are connected in common. So all read write inputs will be connected to the same source so that if you give a read command, it is the same uh, for all of them. And for the chip select, it is also connected in common so that if you select the chip one, it, you know, all of them will be selected uh, simultaneously. Any questions? <clears throat> Okay, if there are no questions, let's continue. Now we want to look at how to expand capacity and here we are using number of words. I mean, even the case we've seen previously also expands capacity. But here when we say uh, capacity, we are trying to say that we are increasing the, the word size. Now we have uh, 16, by four chips, we want to create a 32 by four a module. I should call it a module. Now clearly here, we need two of these, okay? Two 16 by four chips to create a 32 uh, by four module. Now here, the word size is the same, so same bus. But now the address, the number of words have increased, so we need a, a new address, larger address. And so if we had four before for two to power six, for 16, now we will need five because 32 is equal to two to power five. So we need uh, five address bits, A, A4, A3, A2, A1, A0. And for the gentleman who asked whether we sometimes deactivate one chip and activate the other, this is precisely uh, the scenario where we have to deactivate one and activate the other. Now, the read write is connected in common, okay? So this is maintained, but the chip select is used to select one chip at a time, right? Even if we had five chips, four chips, 20 chips, whatever. We need to be considering one chip at a time and we use the chip selects to make sure that we can uh, select only one or activate only one chip at any given moment uh, in time. Right, uh, so. Okay, so let us look at then um the, the 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 example so we can see that or the original one was 16 by 4 meaning that we had four um addresses okay 16 by 4 we had four addresses which was a3 a2 a1 a0 these ones continue functioning <clears throat> as they were functioning before the additional address which in this case is A4, is used uh, for chip select. It will be used for chip select. So, okay. You can see that A4 here is connected to this one, and then an inverted A4 is connected to that chip select. That means that if A4 is zero, then RAM zero are uh, selected. Uh, if A4 is zero, 
RAM 0 is selected. If A4 is 1, that means you have a 1 here, which is inverted to a 0, and then RAM 1 will be will be selected. The rest is the same, same bus size here, input, outputs, and so on. R read, write, connected in common, but this one is used uh, to select or deselect, or at least to select a unique, uh, a unique cell. That means, therefore, that for RAM 0, the address line, the address is A4 to A0 will be from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to 0, Okay, because while A4 is zero, RAM zero is selected, and these addresses can run from zero, 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 zero to zero, one, 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 one. All right. Now, when RAM, when RAM one is connected, that means A4 is one, we can run from one, and these addresses A3 to A0 can run from zero, 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 or range from uh, up to one. One, 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 one. Now, in the end, we have the whole thing ranging from zero, 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 zero to one, 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 and that gives you 32 unique uh, cells or addresses or registers. Okay, so for the first, for this range, we have data from from that, and for that range, we have data from that. Now here you, I think now this is very clear to you that we shouldn't use the chips simultaneously. One should be on or selected and all the others should be off. That's how you expand the number of words. So it is going to be interesting how you expand both, but I believe uh, that it can be done it looks to me, for instance, in this case, that if you have four chips, okay, I'll get a new slide. So you have four chips side by side, and, and maybe, let's say originally they were, we can even say eight by, by two. Now we are going to say 16 by four. Okay, so one, instead of having two lines, we need four lines. And up here, eight, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so A3, A2, a one, a naught. These original ones, a three to a naught, will you know work as they were they were used to working. Okay, uh, and so on. And then the chip select. You have chip select, and so on. Now remember that we need to. Uh, I think okay. I, I I've never done this, so 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 if it doesn't work out, uh, it's fine. But I think if you have more time, you can do it. Obviously, the read-write will be common, will be commonly connected. So let's focus on the chip select. Now, we are expanding word size and also expanding uh, capacity. So from 8 by 2 to 16 uh, by 4. So instead of, of selecting one of these, I think we need to select uh, two of them. So this one could do come here, okay, they were, they were like this, and, mm, and okay, hmm, yes, let us first try this one, and then this one would be, Yeah, it's interesting. You should go and uh, and think about it. I think it can be done. Uh, and then this one would probably be the same. And that would be 
uh, that. So if I say zero, one, two, three, clearly I either select, I should select zero and one simultaneously or two and three simultaneously. So that you can see they are putting their information at different, um, at different bus lines. So this would work as four bits and that would also work as four bits. And now, what about on the word size? Have we expanded the word size? I think we would have expanded it. So if we, if we are looking at, yeah, but you need to figure out how to use A3 uh, to expand, to, to do these chip selects. You might find that perhaps you need to add another line to make it uh, A4. Uh, to, 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 to be able to do that. I don't know. Just go and try and see if it works out. Now, <clears throat> we have uh, an interesting scenario here. So most of these can be done easily. The problem is that when you have uh, larger values, when you need more uh, chips, because it's very easy to activate one and deactivate the other when they are just two. But when they are four or eight or 16, we may need to use uh, a decoder. I don't know Israel, how we deal with them. I mean, we could do this, but I don't want to spend time on it. I think you can do it in your private time. You just need to look at how, uh, in this case, it's really easy. I think the, the diagram is, is quite correct, but you now need to figure out how to use A3 to select these. So for instance, I could say, uh, I could do, make this chip select and that one also chip select. Okay, A3. And then for this one, I invert it. And also for this one, I invert it. And so if my, uh, if my A3 is zero, then both of these are, are, are actually selected. Zero and one are selected. If my A3 is one, then two and three are selected. Actually, I like it. I may even bring it. So, <laughs> so please go and have a look and make sure that that works out for you. Yes, yeah, so when we are choosing between any two, it's very easy. You know, one is one and the other one is zero. We just add one address as we have seen. But when we are uh, uh, having many chips and you have to select one and deactivate the other, sometimes you may find that you have to use a decoder. And we have an example of a decoder here uh, that we are going to look at. But before we go far, let's say we have Uh, two, three, four. And we had our, you know, it was uh, 16, was it 68 by two maybe. So I would be having my own addresses A3, A2, A1. No, it would be A2, A1, and A0. And then I need to add A3. If I had just two, then I add A3. But now I have four. So what if I add another A4 and I find a fig I figure out a way to use this so that it is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. If I have my ROMs 0, 1, 2, 3, then I can say that when it is 0, 0, maybe I select RAM 0, R0. When it's 0, 1, I select RAM 1. If it's 1, 0, I select RAM 2. And if it's 1, 1, I select RAM 3. Uh, but you have one chip select, okay? So you have one chip select, which is chip select that. So how do you combine these, you know, to make sure, I mean, a decoder works better, but there are also other ways you can use normal gates uh, to perform that, to make sure that when this is one, one, you get the right chip select. In here, when it is, I mean, you can use, for, so for instance here, you can use two inverters here, one inverter, one inverter appropriately and so on. And then you would have your selections. But this question 
first of all, if you have 2k by 8, you want 2k by 8, but you have and you want to create an 8k by 8. How many prom chips do you need? You need four. You know, each of them will keep 2k words. Uh, for four of them will keep 8k words together. How many address bus lines are required? Uh, 8k is 2 to power 3 and 2 to power 10, which is 13 address bus lines. Any questions now before we continue? I want us to look at the example of the, once again, I mean, I couldn't set this one I'm about to teach you because it's just too big. Uh, I don't want you to spend 30 minutes trying to earn five marks, but I think we can look at it and try to understand it. Okay, so we are going to take this same example of 8K by eight from four times uh, our memory is eight is two k uh, by eight. Okay, so we combine four of them, and they are here. So we we know that our bus will now be will now be eight. Okay, so that's why you see eight data lines there. Uh, it is uh, output. I think this is a prom. Okay, so I think the question says programmable read only memory so that's why he has only outputs um now 2k each of these we have said is 2k by 8 so 2k is really 2 and 2 to power 10, which is 2 to power 11. So my original address bus, uh, original address for each would be A10 to A0, right? Now, uh, you can see that he added, these people added these for a reason, but these ones are now being used to deselect certain things. In fact, they've used a huge thing because if it were me and I'm selecting between four, I just use a decoder of one line at four line because a one line to four line will activate one line at a time. And so if I use, if I connect each of those lines to, uh, to, the, right, um, to the right chip, then as, as I move through my decoder changes, I can be selecting only one at a time because this would be, my inputs would now be B, A, 00011011. Each of those would select a different line. However, as we are going to see, this memory can be expanded further. So you can continue moving in that direction. Anyhow, first of all, these last two, yeah, two line to four line. Yeah, you're right, two line to four line decoder. Or, or a one of four decoder, yeah. <clears throat> now, you can see that a15 and A14 are used uh, to, to enable uh, the decoder. So they need to be zero. In other words, A15, A14 need to be zero, zero for this decoder to work. That one is already, we already know. E3 also needs to be high and that one has been connected separately. It's not connected to our bus, our address bus. Now, uh, A13 to A11, because remember our addresses start at A10, our original addresses. Now these ones have been connected to the decoder. This is a one of eight decoder. That means it requires, it has eight outputs, but it requires three inputs. And these three inputs are CBA connected to A13, A12, and A11. That means, 
that for line zero, three inputs, I mean, is, uh, uh, let me see, can I call it CBA? It will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Uh, in fact, let me, you know, yeah, already talked about this. Uh, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. <clears throat> so let's see how this is going to work. Um, let me see prom that is selected. If it is zero, 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 if we have zero, 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 we are going to have our first line, this one here, this line zero. Line zero will be low, <coughs> and then the rest will be high, meaning that prom zero will be selected, prom one, prom two, prom three, prom four, prom five, prom six, prom seven. However, in this case, we only have up to prom three. So in fact, our work stops somewhere here. But remember the whole time, a15, A14 is 0, 0. A15, A14. That one also has its own consequences. Now we could add four more here. And if we added four more here, they would work up to 1, 1, 1, so that I have this one. Now this one connects to the last one. This line would connect it to this one, that one to that one, and so on and so forth. However, you can see that here, instead we have, because we have few lines, because we have few chips, sorry, we only use four lines out of the decoder, each line for a particular chip. These, uh, these next four lines are for those other chips. Let me also delete uh, this one. So what if my A3, that means that if A15, A14, A13, A12, A11, so this one is 0, 0, and A13 can change from, we have seen 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, okay? This will select the first eight uh, proms or from PROM0 to PROM7. Obviously, we have seen that for up to PROM3, we only need to stop at 0011. But imagine we had added those. But what if A15, A14 changed to 01? If it changed to 01, this would still change from 000 to 1111. This means that after this, there would be another combination of eight cells, and these ones would also have their own decoder. Because if this one changed to zero one, for sure this decoder would be deselected, meaning that this whole memory structure of eight cells would also be deselected. <coughs> Sorry. But there is another one uh, after this that would be uh, selected. So you can see that by using a decoders, by combining decoders and chips, we can create uh, very large memories indeed. Uh, let me see if there's a question. Uh, but I think for the enable decoder A14 and A15 are uh, one one. No, because if they are one one, you can see here that E2 and E3 are active law. So if they are active law, for you to activate that, you have to be putting zeros. If you put, but now for the next decoder, maybe for it, um, even if E2 is zero and E3 is zero, for E2, you would now need to pass that through some kind of uh, inverter, E3 would go straight in. And for the next, for the last decoder, everything is coming in as one one, you would need to put an inverter uh, for both. Let me see if there's another question. Once again, this is too big, so enable pins, yeah, active low, yes, thanks Maureen. <coughs> Right, so this is a very large thing. If you look at the truth table, it is precisely what we have tried to do. Uh, for PROM0, we are going to, everything will be zero, zero, you can see. Uh, but here you're going to have A3, A12, and A11 should be zero to zero. But for, for PROM0, remember these are, the addresses are, are, are 2K. So from A0, A, A11, no, no, A10 to A0, okay? 
A10 to A0. That, will, that means that your address, you know, they've changed this into hex. I think you remember hex. Uh, they've changed that into hex. Um, and so the whole thing, you know, for hex, you look what for, uh, you look what for, you look what for and for. So this is zero, that is seven, that is maximum F and that is F. Anyway, you can see, let me just try to explain based on this table what I'm trying to do. Is that for PROM0, which has a 2K words, you know, your A15, A14 will always be zero and even these ones will be zero and then they are selecting PROM0. When this changes to one, all the way to one, you select the next PROM. And so this one will go through until 0, 1, 1, and that's why we ended at PROM3. This one will change until it is 1, 1, 1, because now it is 0, 1, 1. Until it is 1, 1, 1, while this is still 0, 0, we will be at PROM7. By the time we go through a15 from 00 to 11, we will have reached from uh, 63. Because we can see that when A15, A14 is 00, we have eight proms. Not eight proms, actually. Let me just say prom 0 to 7. 0, 1. Okay, so maybe we won't reach here. Zero one, it will be eight to 15. One zero, it will be 16 to, uh, 16 to uh, 23. And one one, it will be 24 to 31. Okay. Now that means that we would actually have 32 proms uh, we can expand this by adding another 28 proms to make 32 proms. And when we do that, each prom is 2K. That gives us a 60, I don't know why I keep this as power. 2K, that gives us 64K. And you can see even here when you're summing this, it will end up at 64K, okay? Right. So a bit complicated, but, but those bars on E1 and E2 mess me up. Hey, if you are still messed up when we are finishing uh, uh, the course, uh, then uh, you have a big challenge. You need to work hard. They are really just easy. I mean, if you see a bar, you know that it should have a zero for it to be active or a one to be inactive. Uh, and this is actually from first year. So you, 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 you really shouldn't be messed up about that. Okay. Um, we have done 78 slides of this and it's really been, I think I told you at the beginning that this was a marathon. Uh, this was really the longest uh, chapter and it has proved. The next chapter we might do it in one lecture and the next chapter after that we might do it in one lecture uh, and, and we complete this course. But <clears throat> You see, we, we, we've been talking about ROM, read-only memory, where things repeat themselves. So we are going to look at one way of creating read-only memory using what we call uh, PLODs. Um, PLODs. Now, you can have, let's say we know that, I don't know. Let's say we know that uh, we have C, B, A. So you might create how, for instance, your lift works or the microwave at home works, uh, whatever. And you find that it has three inputs, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And you find that your output, you have designed this. And you know this is how traffic lights might work, for instance. If your traffic lights are not dynamic, they are coded in a way that works. They work in the same way all the time. So maybe when I have this, I have one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one. Now we are going to create a system which has inputs C, B, A, and outputs. Okay, maybe 
I mean, can uh, whatever, you know, I could say, uh, let me remove, let me remove this. Uh, we can see that here we have maybe four. So we are looking at where it's high, maybe Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4. So that depending on what C is, you have a unique uh, output all the time uh, according to what you have designed. We are going to be looking at inside here to create uh, a PLOD. So these would be applicable in things like cash machines, in the microwaves at home, in traffic lights, in the dashboard in your car. Your dashboard works exactly the same way. If it is uh, giving you an engine check light, it does it. There are parameters. When they happen, it will show you the light. If it's a wiper, if it's a broken lamp, if it is an odometer, exactly the same all the time. We want to create PLODs that perform that functionality for us. We are going to be looking at this uh, in the next lecture. Um, yes, uh, for the test, I'm only going to set everything except memory. I plan to give another cut that focuses on memory and PLDs, but otherwise I'm teaching, I'm setting everything from, as, as uh, Catherine has nicely put it, uh, from chapter one to chapter 11. Now I said chapter one because I know that you know it. For the quizzes, everything we've done, for the quizzes, everything will be there. The, qu the quizzes are not meant to, 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 you're not meant to to fail them or they are not meant for you to fail them, if that makes sense. I just give things just to make sure that we get some marks and combine to get our assessment. Uh, but yes, everything in there and they'll generally be simple. Uh, I might set something from chapter three or chapter five. I'm not saying go there and read as if your life depends on it, but there are certain building blocks that we apply in later chapters that are found there and please do read. Uh, uh, about them. Just make sure that you're not blank. Thank you very much. We've come to the end of our lecture. Uh, we'll meet uh, on Monday and have our cut. Uh, until then, have a nice week and, and goodbye.